Welcome back to the Eclectic Mechanics Workshop. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to diagnose a Manitowoc ice machine if the fan is behaving very erratically. I can show you exactly what you need to look at and exactly how to temporarily fix it until you can get a mechanic there to make the necessary replacements. Let's get into it. So when you're working with a Manitowoc unit like this one, sometimes what is known as the fan cycle pressure switch can actually start to fail. And the way you'll be able to notice if this particular switch is starting to fail is that the fan will rev, will rev up to full speed the first, when the unit first turns on, and then it will, it will slow down a little bit and then rev up really shortly thereafter and then slow down a little, rev up, slow down very erratic behavior and you don't know it sounds obnoxious almost and so first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to take off this front louver right here and that will just pop off with two 5 sixteenths i'm using a 5 sixteenths nut driver two 5 sixteenths screws and it will just pop right off no trouble and the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unhook this particular wiring harness that plugs in right here on the circuit board and once you because and it's very important that you unplug that because this whole ice bin will actually is actually going to be sliding out and before you do that you definitely want to make sure this is unhooked so you don't accidentally break the other half of the wiring harness on the circuit board next thing you're going to do is you're going to, on right here on either side there are four bolts that you're going to two you're going to loosen and two you're going to remove altogether. The bottom two are the ones you're going to remove all together. And so let's undo those real quickly. There's one. And there's two. Put them both over here. And then these upper two, you're just going to loosen. And you'll notice when they're loose enough, you'll notice these two little brackets right here will just drop like that. That's all you need to do. Once that's dropped, you're good. So this other one, loosen a little bit. Down it goes. And that is how you release the ice chest from the, or the ice bin from this ice machine. Now let me move you to a different spot and I'll show you what you're going to do next. One more thing you're going to do before you pull out the ice chest is you're going to loosen this hose clamp right here and you're going to pull down the drain hose on your Manitowoc unit and you're ready to pull out the ice chest. Now let's go ahead and slide the ice bin all the way down. And for that, you're going to want a bucket to catch your dripping water if you have any ice in there. And then you're just going to grab the front of the machine like this, and you'll notice the ice chest just slides right out. I'm going to stop it right about there because I don't need it to be open that much further. So now let me angle you down a little further and show you where we're going to be working. So right here, you will see there's actually a couple of pressure switches. Let me widen my beam out so you can actually see them. You'll notice that there's one right here and one right here. And you'll see that I've already disconnected this one. And that is your fan cycle pressure switch. And so that's where we're heading next. So when you look at your pressure switches here, on top of both of them, let me widen my beam out here, you'll notice there are a couple of little spade connectors that attach to the top of the pressure switches. Now, I've already removed the spade connectors from the fan pressure, or the fan cycle pressure switch. And the reason why, I'm, why I did that is because I'm going to bypass the fan switch altogether. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have a mechanic on the way, but I need to have my ice machine run. And it can do that with the fan switch bypassed. You just don't want to do it for an extended period of time. And the way I'm going to bypass it is with one of these little jumper cables that I made. And I will show you how to do that right here. So a couple things you're going to need to make this jumper cable happen is, one, you're going to need some wire. It doesn't have to be robust. I'm using 14 gauge wire because that's plenty for this application. The fan is not high amperage. so. You can just use some basic 14 and you're going to need some spade connectors and in this case you're going to want two male spade connectors there you go and not 
to female spade connectors, not that one. So you're gonna take your females and put those away. You're gonna hang on to your males. And then you're gonna need wire strippers and a wire crimpers, which you will be crimping the spade connectors with. And I'm just using a crimper that's on the underside of my Leatherman serge. So first we're gonna get like maybe three inches, three or four inches of wire because that's all the more you need. You'll be bending it once it's done. You'll just go ahead and strip that. Plain and simple. I'm actually gonna get just a hair more of bare wire. And there we go like that. And then you can, I like to load my little spade connectors into my Leatherman's crimper before I actually put the wire in there. So it's just a matter of getting a good handle on Leatherman, sticking the wire in there and giving it a good clamp. And same thing on the other side, I load it in, put the wire in the spade connector. It's a little too deep, but right about there. And clamp it down. And so that is what you will be left with when you're all done. I'm going to bend mine into a little U shape, so that makes it a lot easier for when I am putting the spade connectors for, that go to the fan cycle switch right in there. And you want the plastic covered spade connectors, so that will prevent any short circuiting on anything else, on any other components inside the ice machine. So now we're back at our ice machine. And now we're ready to put this little jumper cable that I just showed you how to make in. So let's go ahead and set my flashlight down. So I don't exactly need it right here. And like I said in the previous video, you wanted both male and male connectors. So you can go just hook the, sometimes these might be a little stubborn, but you'll just go ahead and put those right in to the spade connectors. You may have to fidget with them a little bit, but that's okay. Make sure that they slide in. There's one. And flip this one around so it will actually slide in there. And there's two. And that is how you bypass your fan cycle pressure switch. And that's really all there is to it. So when you, so when, like I said, when you bypass this, you're only doing it for a short period of time because you have a mechanic on the way and he's actually going to replace this switch properly. And the reason why you want to have replaced the switch and not just leave it bypassed altogether is because this particular compressor does require a, mini, a minimum pressure. And when the condensing fan is constantly, constantly running, it doesn't allow it to get that optimum pressure talked with my my refrigeration mechanic who is on his way he said that you can do this for a, a short period of time only about maybe he didn't give me an exact number but I'm gonna say I am com only comfortable running this for about a day or so uh, a day or 24 hours on it with it bypassed like this I don't want to stress the machine too much because I want this machine to hang on a little bit longer so let's go ahead and start putting this thing back together. So now that we've gotten it all buttoned up, let's go ahead and test it out to make sure that the fan actually turns on the way it's supposed to. And that, and because the fan is current or the fan cycle switch is currently bypassed, as soon as the compressor kicks on, the fan should kick on right away as well goes through its drain cycle, and drain out any water that's been sitting in the ice machine so it doesn't make ice with any dirty water. And it does that for a little bit and now we should, there's the compressor and there's the fan. So we have, so we have a functioning fan and a functioning compressor just like it just like it normally does but with the fan pressure switch bypass it's going to be staying constantly running like that the whole time if the fan cycle switch were still in or were not bypassed 
you would hear it slow down very briefly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it run for a little bit, make sure it puts out at least one sheet of ice, and then we're going to let it, we're going to shut it off because I'm not going to need it for a couple of days. And we are back in business on the ice machine. A nice fresh sheet of ice that just dropped. So guys, like, like I said, this, this is an easy way to temporarily um, get your fan back running normally and not have it be obnoxiously going all over the place and fluctuating in its speed. I, I must say in advance that I am not licensed in the field of refrigeration or anything like that. So it, if you want to do this, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you only do it temporarily because this is, again, it, that particular compressor is, is designed to run with a minimum pressure and if the condensing fan is constantly, constantly running, it, won't, it will eventually not be able to achieve that minimum pressure. So make sure if you do this, you have your mechanic called and he will be on his way eventually to make sure that he can come out and fix that correctly. Um, so if you guys have any questions I, about this particular manual to lock machine, I will answer them to the best of my ability. But again, I am not a expert on this. Um, I would definitely consult your local expert. In my case, we, we, use, um, we use all temp refrigeration out of Cedar Rapids to work on our, our machines. So if you, if you need an ice machine in, or an ice machine repair in, you are in the Cedar Rapids or Iowa City area, I would strongly recommend them. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to check me out on Instagram and Facebook to find out what I am working on and what will be coming your direction on, the, on my YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget to hit that little bell icon on the subscribe button because apparently subscri subscriptions don't mean anything anymore. And thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. We'll talk to you then.